This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, with a cylinder object, where can I find the inner radius option? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and the question is asking about the inner radius option. So let's say you have a cylinder shape and you want to create a pipe or maybe a ring object. So the inner radius option lives inside the initialized palette of a cylinder 3D primitive. So if I navigate over to the tool palette over here and just click on any one of these icons, this is going to pop open this menu here. And under this 3D meshes area, you're going to see all these primitive shapes here that are appended with this 3D text. So you have the sphere 3D, the cube 3D, and the cylinder 3D. Now these 3D primitives are going to have this initialize palette that's going to allow you to customize different attributes on these shapes. So I'm just going to select this cylinder 3D object here and load that in. And I'm going to draw that out on my canvas. Then I'm going to go into edit mode by clicking this button here or pressing T on my keyboard. And now I have loaded that 3D primitive. Now, as long as the object is a 3D primitive, if you come over here to the initialize palette and open this up, you're going to have these different sliders here that are allow you to control or vary the shape of this object. And one of the options here with the cylinder 3D primitive is this inner radius. So I can come over here and scroll this slider here and you're going to see I'm going to start getting that pipe or ring effect on that cylinder. Now you have other options here you can change as well, like tapering. You can also determine how many divides this mesh has and even change the size in specific axes. Now these options like inner radius are only going to be available in this initialized palette as long as your object is a 3D primitive. Now 3D primitives cannot be sculpted on, so if I come across the cylinder here and I try to use the standard brush, you're going to get this dialog that's going to pop up. And this is just telling you that your mesh is a 3D primitive and you need to convert it to a polymesh 3D object before you're going to be able to sculpt on it. Now once you convert this to a polymesh 3D object, these options in the initialize panel here, like this inner radius, are going to disappear. So if I go to the tool palette up here and I select a polymesh 3D cylinder, so this one right here, and now you'll notice that the initialized palette no longer has that inner radius option. So if you have a poly mesh object, you can now sculpt on this or use any of the different options inside of ZBrush. But the initialized palette will now change to just be converting your object to a Q cube or a Q sphere or different quadded mesh options. So you're no longer going to have that inner radius slider. So just make sure that if you can't find that inner radius option, that your cylinder is a 3D primitive and not a poly mesh object. So if I select that cylinder 3D primitive again, and I go to the initialize palette here, you'll see now I have that inner radius area there. So the 3D primitives will allow you to determine a shape, and then you convert it to a poly mesh 3D to further sculpt on it. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.